Hello and welcome. We're starting in the garden scent today because at the time of filming this it is spring for me and those beautiful hanging baskets really inspired me. When I got home from the garden centre I made this little pen drawing in my sketchbook and decided that that should be the basis for this month's series so I thought you might like to see the whole process from start to finish. I usually find that the sketch in my sketchbook can be a bit better than the one I put on the paper because I get all nervous as we all do because you're thinking you're using your special paper and this is the proper painting and you don't want to mess it up but of course all of those thoughts don't really help you with the process. A way around it of course would be to trace and transfer my sketch from my sketchbook onto my paper but you know me I'm far too impatient for that and I think the best way to get over any drawing fears is just to do more drawing. So I'm starting on my watercolour paper with an erasable coloured pencil uh, and once I get a bit confident that I've placed it in the right spot I'm going to move on with pen. So let's speed up the video so that you don't get too bored watching me draw. My aim here is a loose and lively expression of those very joyful baskets of flowers so I'm not worrying about getting every bloom in the right place and capturing every petal exactly right. What I want to do is make sure I've got the main big shapes or something that resembles the sort of shapes that those pansies make. So I'm putting those in first and making sure that I've got a sort of pleasing arrangement of them across the basket there. And then I start putting in some leaf shapes. And again, I'm not copying every single thing on the photograph. That photo that I took at the garden centre, you might have noticed um, one of the, part of the basket was obscured by another basket, so most of the time I'm just having to make it up. But I rather love that. Um, and once I've placed in all the blooms and some of the leaves, I'm now feeling a bit more confident to go in with my pen. And I'm using one of my favourite Uniball pens there. They're just very standard, straight from the office supply store kind of pens. Um, but that is very fine and I was having a little bit of problem with it on this paper. Because it is watercolour paper because I'm going to use Brusho in a moment. So do stay tuned to that because Brusho is very exciting to watch in action. Now once I've put in those main lines and shapes, I uh, want to erase all of those pencil marks and this is where you've got to go a bit gently because you don't want to damage the watercolour paper. Now I've swapped to another of my favourite pens, that's a platinum carbon desk pen and it's putting in a bit more of a bolder line and I don't know if you remember from the little sketch I had in my sketchbook, adding the value um, which is those the dark, when I say the value, I mean the dark spaces that I can see, which are really the spaces in between the leaves, the shadows that the leaves cast upon one another um, and around some of those blooms, is what really um, makes the drawing make a bit more sense. And now I have started painting with Brusho. That is the powdered watercolour that you saw me sprinkle over the page. And if you're interested in that, I've got another video that tells you more about Brusho and shows you a different way of creating more of an abstract floral piece using this very, very fun medium. Now that first bit of Brusho that I put in, I used the spray bottle, which gave me the speckled background effect. And now what I'm doing is painting the flowers themselves because I, I want them to stand out because they really struck me when I was in that garden centre and that's what I want to put into my painting. So I've put a colour called Lemon, which is very bright and vibrant in this brush range, onto my palette and added a bit of water which turns it into paint. So that means I can now um, paint in those yellow pansies. I have to now make sure that those dry and it's a fairly warm day so they are drying quite uh, quite well. The reason I'm doing that is I now want to go in with a different colour and so I've just sprinkled on a colour called sea green. If any of that page was damp 
it would mix with the yellows. So that's why I wanted to make sure that the what I'd done originally was dry before I went uh, adding in more brush -over. And there you can see once I put, popped in a bit of the green where those leaves are, I'm occasionally sprinkling in a bit more brush -over to give it a bit more texture. Uh, and that sea green has lovely variation of some blues. So I rather enjoy doing that and I keep going back in there with a bit of extra um, dry powder. Now I having, I'm having some debates with myself about whether to leave it. I, in my head I had a bit more of an, a kind of unfinished painting where I would have not done quite so much work with the colour but this brush is a little bit irresistible and the colours are so juicy and vibrant I couldn't stop. Now that I've added that green under the basket and at the top, I have to leave it to dry before I start painting the basket, otherwise any paint I put in there is just going to spread out into the background the way any watercolour paint uh, would do. And I've opted to go for a colour called Prussian Blue, so I'm really deviating from the photo I took because those baskets weren't blue at all, but of course this is the joy of painting. You can absolutely make it up as you go along and why wouldn't you? I chose the Prussian blue because it's one of the colours that I think they must have used to make that sea green so I find it ties in very nicely with the green colour because some of the extra speckles in the, the sea green powder seem to be that Prussian blue so it's giving me a nice sort of harmony and of course blue is a very nice lively contrast for those bright yellow pansies. And speaking of those pansies, I do love that they're this bright splash of colour, but at the moment they're a little bit flat and boring, and that's not them at all. So I've mixed up the colour called Cam Gamboge, which is one of the ones that I sprinkled on in the very beginning, and I've added a bit of uh, water to that to turn it into paint, and I'm using that just to add a little bit of shadow and shape and interest to the pansies. However, you are seeing that with brush this is a risky business and one of the problems I'm having there is any of the loose green powder that I sprinkled over when I was painting the leaves that is still sitting on the top of the page, if those little tiny speckles are sitting on the pansy that I'm painting, they're going to activate and turn green just like that one there has done. But this is the joy of brusho, you can't get too upset about that. Brusho is just way too much fun. Mm -hmm.